Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Saudi Minister of Tourism and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Saudi Fund for Development Ahmed bin Aqil Al Khatib at Khadibia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of continuing to strengthen cooperation between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia to achieve the joint aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness emphasized that a shared value of unity underpins the long standing relationship and collective aspirations of both countries. He commended His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud for his continued efforts to strengthen cooperation and coordination between the two kingdoms which are bolstered by the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council framework. His Royal Highness noted that cooperation efforts support the development of priority economic sectors and that the two kingdoms ongoing investments in tourism projects are designed to achieve common goals. For his part, the Saudi Tourism Minister expressed his gratitude to His Royal Highness for his commitment to fostering bilateral relations and wished Bahrain for their progress and prosperity. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad Al Malki, and the Minister of Tourism, Fatma Slayrafi, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Chief Executive Officer of Bahrain Polytechnic, Dr. Siran Okafain, at Ghibiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of modern teaching methods to further strengthen the kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He emphasized the kingdom's commitment to education as a core pillar of development, which shapes future generations of leaders. His Royal Highness was briefed on Bahrain Polytechnic's strategy, which aims to supply the labor market with skilled graduates according to the highest educational standards and practices. He noted that investing in Bahraini nationals remains at the core of the kingdom's development strategy to meet current and future requirements of the labor market. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain Polytechnic's efforts in offering comprehensive educational programs that balance practical training and academic knowledge to meet Bahrain's labor market requirements. The Crown Prince commended the efforts of the President and members of the Board of Trustees of Bahrain Polytechnic as administrative and academic bodies in achieving its goals. For his part, the CEO thanked His Royal Highness for his continuous support of educational institutions and for strengthening their role in the kingdom's development. He further highlighted the commitment to implementing Bahrain Polytechnic strategy to benefit the students and keep up to date with modern educational methods. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, and the Chairman of Bahrain Polytechnic's Board of Trustees, Wa'il bin Nasr al Barak, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki also attended the meeting. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa, patronized the 11th mass wedding ceremony organized by the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation for Humanitarian Work. To celebrate the wedding ceremony of 1,200 young men and women in the presence of UAE Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Royal Humanitarian Foundation RHF Secretary General Mustafa Sayyid, and the Director General of the Foundation Mohammed Al Khouri, His Highness Sheikh Nasr affirmed that relations between Bahrain and the UAE is moving towards more progress and prosperity in light of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the RHF Honorary President and the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He noted that their directives continue to support citizens in both countries, stressing their keenness to support the Bahraini youth in providing a stable family life. His Highness hailed the depth of bilateral ties, commending the efforts of the Khalifa bin Zayed Foundation in supporting Bahraini youth, noting that holding the ceremony reflects the strong relations between the two countries. His Highness congratulated the newlyweds and wished them success in their marital life. For his part, Al Khouri expressed his thanks and appreciation to the leadership of both countries for their support of the mass wedding ceremony in Bahrain and expressed pride in supporting Bahraini youth. For his part, as Sayyid expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness to support Bahraini citizens and the UAE President for supporting the wedding ceremony, which reflects the depth of bilateral ties. He also thanked the Foundation for organizing the ceremony.
His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at Wadi Palace the students of the Nasser Al Mina project of the Ibn Khaldun National School, which is concerned with repairing, restoring, and furnishing the homes of needy families. His Highness affirmed that humanitarian and voluntary work is one of the values inherent in Bahraini youth, reflecting the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for supporting charity and humanitarian initiatives. His Highness praised the project's main objective, which is considered one of the uh, distinguished youth initiatives that has a great impact on souls of many needy families. His Highness also stressed that the initiative reflects the status of Bahraini youth and their active role in community service and their keenness on providing assistance to needy families, especially since the students themselves are the ones who carry out the process of repairing and restoring homes. His Highness commended the important national and humanitarian role played by the students participating in the project. Finally, His Highness Sheikh Nasser lauded the efforts made by the Ibn Khaldun National School in supporting students and youth initiatives to achieve the noble goals for the advancement of society based on the national role played by the school since its establishment, stressing that the project is an extension of a series of social and humanitarian initiatives and activities. On the sidelines of his attendance of the inauguration ceremony of the re-elected Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan for a new term last Saturday in Ankara, delegated by His Majesty the King, the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa said in an interview with the Andalus news agency that Bahrain is looking forward to boost trade and tourism exchange between the two countries, encouraging the private sector to explore available investment opportunities and strengthen partnerships in the infrastructure sector. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed Bahrain's keenness under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamid al Khalifa and the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa to continue strengthening cooperation with Turkey. The Deputy Premier recalled that over 17 official visits were conducted and several agreements and memoranda of understanding were signed, amounting to 38 agreements and MOUs in various fields. He added that His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirmed during their visit to Turkey their keenness to strengthen relations between the two countries. He expressed honor. In attending the inauguration ceremony of President Erdogan, which reflects trust that the two countries will continue to foster bilateral relations and advance them towards further cooperation and partnership. The chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the expansion project of the operations and reanimation rooms at Salmania Medical Complex (SMC). The opening took place in the presence of Minister of Health Dr. Jalil bin Sayyid Jawad Hassan, Government Hospitals Chairman Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, Government Hospitals Chief Executive Dr. Ahmed Mohammed Lansari, and senior officials. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed commended the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also praised all the officials in charge of the project, which reflects keenness of the kingdom and government to develop health services and achieve the goals of the Comprehensive Development March. He took pride in inaugurating the pioneering project, which aims to further optimize the health services at SMC. The health minister described the inauguration of the expansion project as an added value to the initiative's aim at boosting the health sector. She commended the efforts of the medical caterers in various disciplines, particularly the rare ones. Within the frameworks of the visit of the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa to the United States of America, the minister participated in the DARE program celebration of its 40th anniversary. In the presence of Bahrain's ambassador to the U.S. and the first member of the program from outside of the U.S., Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, where the launch of the curriculum of peaceful coexistence and combating extremism was launched within the frameworks of the development of the anti violence and anti addiction program, Ma'an program, implemented by Bahrain. After after translating the training curricula into Arabic in line with Arab customs and traditions and in partnership with DARE, the Minister of Interior was honored with an award by the program officials. The minister then delivered a speech where he thanked all the attendees.
As you are aware, we meet today in a difficult international circumstances, a dark era in which we need the telescope of wisdom to guide us towards peace, security, and stability. But one thing I have learned in life is that when diving and the water's visibility below is unclear, you need to stay close to your body. So now, now is the time for true friends like Bahrain and the United States to stick together, to redouble our joint efforts, to overcome the threats and challenges and deliver the security and stability our people deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and deep sense of accomplishment that I stand before you to share a significant milestone in our nation's journey towards fostering peace and countering extremism. Today, I am delighted to announce the successful launch of the Peaceful Coexistence and Anti-Extremism Curriculum. This occasion marks a momentous step forward in our collective effort to address the global challenge of extremism. Extremism begins by motivating a significant portion of society to adapt extreme views that can lead to local, national, regional, and international escalation. Such views make it impossible for people to maintain friendly ties and even agree to disagree on issues. I'm sure that everyone here tonight will agree that extremist views risk spreading and inciting violence on a global scale. We have seen it happen and can expect it to happen again and again if the threat is not eradicated. Throughout our collective experience, we have seen individuals with the most extremist mindset seeking to impose their beliefs on the entire community or trying to eliminate those who disagree with them. Unfortunately, the consequences extend far beyond violence and can also significantly undermine economic well-being, block community development and innovation, and most importantly, undermine national unity while breaking the very social fabric that binds us together. At the Ministry of Interior, it is our duty to promote and maintain public security and general order and safety. It is a core objective of the Ministry to promote the fundamental value of human life, to fight intolerance and extremism. This is outlined in the National Plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation and reinforce the values of nationalism, better known as Bahrainuna or our Bahrain, which was launched in 2019. This national plan aims to foster a sense of community and national identity among all of Bahraini citizens and reinforce an atmosphere of unity, development, and prosperity. Community engagement is vital in our work to promote tolerance and improve resilience against radicalization. 
within Bahrain, the Ministry of Interior's Community Police Service is at the forefront of engaging with the local communities and fostering partnership between citizens and the police and implementing programs against intolerance and extremism. For example, the MOI has instituted an anti-violence and addiction program adapted from the US DARE program and which has led to the reduction of school children misbehavior by 56% since its launch in 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, as His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has explained, and I quote, ignorance is the enemy of peace. It is therefore our duty to learn, to share, to live together in peaceful coexistence in the spirit of mutual respect and love, end of quote. The landmark peaceful coexistence and anti-extremism curriculum is the latest example of the community police implementing initiatives in line with His Majesty's vision by utilizing education to promote tolerance, peace, and mutual respect. By reinforcing these fundamental values, in our nation's youth, the Ministry of Interior is helping to develop a generation that will be more resistant to radicalization and willing to confront extremism ideas with messages of tolerance and peaceful coexistence, developed and implemented before 2020. The course has had significant positive impact on school children in Bahrain, recognizing the extraordinary potential of this program to address extremism worldwide. The Ministry of Interior aimed to work with a prestigious American educational institution to ensure the lessons were adaptable to an international context. Soon after, the ministry engaged with the University of North Carolina, Greensboro, which has thoroughly evaluated and optimized the program. I believe now is the time to share the Ministry of Interior's expertise in community engagement and counter-terrorism education with the world because just as the transnational nature of terrorists parallels the threat of a virus, international cooperation is crucial to combat the global extremist challenge. Increased global interdependence and connectivity mean that extremist threats go beyond borders. It is therefore impossible for any country, no matter how powerful, to counter these threats alone. A country's power to mitigate and counter extremism lies in bilateral and multilateral frameworks instituted by like-minded nations. Before I conclude, I would like to thank Bahrain's embassy here in Washington for organizing this event. And it is fitting that we are hosted by His Excellency Ambassador Sheikh Abdullah, who played a significant role in introducing our MAN program when he was governor of Bahrain's southern government. Ladies, and gentlemen. In conclusion, I believe that this program is an effective strategy for combating extremism. Addressing ignorance, 
through education is vital to prevent radicalization and foster a new generation of tolerance and understanding. As President Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, and I quote, knowledge, that is education, in its truest sense, is our best protection against unreasoning prejudice and panic-making fear. End of quote. Therefore, we can all agree that through education, we can combat ignorance, fight extremism, and bring peace to our world. Thank you. The ceremony's segments continued informing the attendees of the academic accomplishments in the field of updating the curricula in cooperation with the University of North Carolina team in Greensboro, where the members of the participating team were introduced. Then the minister and officials of the organization honored the university experts headed by Dr. David Warrick, project principal investigator and uh, project director Dr. Samantha Kelly. During the celebration, a video clip was presented on the new curriculum, after which a panel discussion moderated by Kristen Fenton Rose began with the introduction of the participants, namely the director of the Janet and Eli Reinhardt Program for Counterterrorism and Intelligence, Dr. Matthew Levet, the director of the Future of Demographic and Health Surveys Project at the Scowcroft Center for Advanced Defense Strategy and Security, Thomas Warwick, and professor of public health education at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro and founder of the Center for Athlete Wellness and Prevention Strategies, Dr. David Warwick. The program has been amazing. I mean, the Bahrain team has done a great job um, using what we've learned through the evaluation to improve it and um, make it better for the children in the schools. And I would say my role during the project was really to work um, with the Bahrain team, do all the coordinating that um, <laughs> David talked about during the pandemic, um, both at a distance and in person. And I will just say that <laughs> the Bahrain team was by far the best team that we've worked with. The deployment of a D.A.R.E. program in Bahrain, using the term Ma'an, is really unique because it took together Bahraini and American academics, taking a program and developing it specifically to the culture and the language of Bahrain, and then evaluating it. It's all about evaluation. For years we've known we've had a problem, but it's been difficult to convince people to, to put in place policies that, that weren't tested. But this has now been tested, it's been evaluated, and that has tremendous value, not only in Bahrain, but potentially for deployment in other countries, including here in the United States. One of the strengths of the program in Bahrain is that it was tailored to community needs. One of the lessons that we have learned in fighting extremism all over the world uh, is that uh, there has been a significant amount of increase in our knowledge of what programs work and what doesn't and that these programs need to be tailored to the individual needs of the communities. So MAN is tailored to the conditions of Bahrain. It really is important that these be tailored to the communities they are intended to protect. The cooperation was really the key and it was the cooperation between between MAN, between our team at UNC Greensboro, and with Dare America and Dare International, and 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 I mentioned those three groups, but I also have to mention the coordination and collaboration with the schools in Bahrain, the principals and the classroom teachers that gave us access and helped us deliver and administer the surveys to the students, and approving our survey protocols. 
The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, held a joint meeting with the Minister of Finance and Regional Policies, Madgorzata Jorzinska, on the sidelines of the two delegations' participation in the meetings of the second session of UN Habitat held in Nairobi. The meeting reviewed the efforts of the two countries in providing housing services to citizens, ways of cooperation and exchange of expertise and experiences, and a number of topics for discussion in the UN Habitat meetings. Ramehi reviewed the ministry's plan to provide housing services to citizens and the programs recently introduced by the ministry to provide immediate and sustainable housing services. For his part, Jaro Sinska praised the Kingdom's efforts in providing housing services, stressing the readiness for cooperation to develop housing plans in both countries. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna bint Ahmed Ramehi, led Bahrain's delegation to the inaugural meeting of the second session of the United Nations Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat, which is held in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning will address the session tomorrow and highlight the Kingdom's efforts in implementing the SDGs 2030, specifically Goal 11, which stipulates making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. On the sidelines of her participation, the second session of the EU Urban Planning, Housing and Urban Planning also held a meeting with the general manager of Sheikh Zayed Housing Program, Mohammed Al Mansouri, at the UAE. The two sides reviewed fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE and the efforts made in providing housing services to citizens. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning highlighted partnership between the public and private sectors in Bahrain as outcomes in developing housing services. For his part, Al Mansouri praised Bahrain's efforts in developing its housing services for citizens and emphasized the importance of cooperation and exchanging expertise. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma bin Jafar al-Sayrafi, welcomed her Saudi counterpart, Ahmed bin Agil al-Khatib, on his first official visit to the kingdom upon his arrival in Bahrain. Al-Sayrafi stressed that this visit represents an important phase in strengthening cooperation relations in the field of tourism between the two brotherly countries within the framework of the wise vision of His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques and an implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Al-Sayrafi affirmed the keenness of the Ministry of Tourism and the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority to exert the necessary efforts to boost tourism cooperation between the two sides to open horizons of development and growth. The minister noted that the development of the tourism sector in each of the two countries highlights the importance of strengthening cooperation between them to ensure more monumentum for the growth. Bahrain and Saudi Arabia officially signed an MOU that seeks to position both nations as a singular regional and global tourism destination. The agreement is in line with the visions of His Majesty King Hamad Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, His Majesty King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. The MOU was signed by the tourism minister Fatma Sirafi and her Saudi counterpart Ahmed Al Khatib in the presence of the CEO of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Dr. Nasser Qaidi, as well as representatives from the two ministries as part of the official ceremony held in Manama. The MOU aims to strengthen relations between the two kingdoms and reflect their efforts to enhance cooperation in the field of tourism. The MOU establishes a framework for unifying efforts to market and promote tourism activities and programs in the two kingdoms. It involves coordinating joint events to attract more tourists, fostering growth in specialized tourism sector and collaborating with tourism agencies and regional as well as international tour operators to create shared tourist destinations. Under the patronage of the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the concluding ceremony for the Bahrain Robotics Competition was held organized by the Ministry of Education and Brightest Education. The ceremony was attended by the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Jum'ah, who thanked His Highness Sheikh Khalid for supporting the national competition. The minister noted that the increase in the number of participants in the competition reflects its importance in motivating the youth to present creative ideas in the field of robotics and artificial intelligence. He highlighted the efforts of the ministry in enhancing the students' abilities in the creativity and artificial intelligence and thanked Brightest Education for organizing the event. For her part, the CEO of Brightest Education, Fatma Kemal, expressed thanks to His Highness Sheikh Khaled for patronizing the competition and the ministry for its cooperation and support 
of developing robot and artificial intelligence activities in education institutions in Bahrain. The winning team, sponsors, and the judging committee were honored. An exhibition for the participating student projects was held on the sidelines of the ceremony. The Governor General of the Australian Commonwealth, General David Hurley, has received the credentials of the Ambassador of Bahrain to Australia, residing in Jakarta, Ambassador Ahmed Abdullah Al Hajri. Ambassador Al Hajri has conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness uh, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the Governor General of the Australian Commonwealth, and the were wishes to the government and the people of Australia for further progress and prosperity. The ambassador affirmed the kingdom's interest in the existing bilateral relations and developing them at all levels. General David Hurley has asked the ambassador and Audrey to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, wishing Bahrain continued progress and prosperity. Aluminum Bahrain Alba won the 2023 International Safety Award with merit from the British Safety Council in recognition of the company's tireless efforts in maintaining a safe and healthy work environment during the year 2022. The award was received by Alba's Chief Executive Officer Ali al Baqali during the International Safety Award ceremony held by the British Safety Council in London. The honouring comes after Alba posted a delegation from the British Safety Council in June during its month safety performance review meeting. It highlighted the company's performance in the areas of safety, health, fire and security, as well as environmental indicators since the beginning of the year. The Bahraini Red Crescent Society delivered 40 tons of relief aid to the Syrian Arab Red Crescent Society distributed to the afflicted and those affected by the earthquake that struck large areas in the north and west of the country. The aid shipment included essential food items and clothes, blankets and baby formula. Bahrain's ambassador to Syria, Wahid Mbarak Sayyar, said that from the first moments of the earthquake, His Majesty the King issued directives for Bahrain to stand by the brotherly Syrian people in their humanitarian ordeal and provide relief assistance. The National Center for Cybersecurity has launched the e-signature initiative. More in this report. The e-signature initiative, which has the same legal status as a manual signature, is an integrated and reliable security system that aims to enable users to conduct electronic transactions with complete confidentiality, reliability and safety within the framework of the expansion of digital transformation and continuing to facilitate the transactions of citizens and residents. BKI project is one of the key project in the Kingdom of Bahrain. It's a strategic project that is launched uh, in year 2022. It is expected to be done by the year 2024. It is very strategic project. Uh, the project aim to have uh, paperless uh, government, which means that we will have a digital signature to sign for the individuals, for the companies, be it in Bahrain or outside Bahrain. Uh, hopefully, we will be done with the project by the end of 2024. The National Center for Cybersecurity, the consulting company and the executing company presented the timetable and materials related to the project during the initial meeting. And we are here today in order to kick off uh, the PKI NIT infrastructure project for NCSE and the Kingdom of Bahrain. This is a very strategic project uh, for the Kingdom of Bahrain because it will leverage the digital transformation of the country and providing uh, trust services, digital certificates and uh, electronic signatures will allow the Bahraini citizens to digitally sign all transactions and assist them into this uh, transition to, to, to the new requirements. Uh, we are very delighted to be here and we are looking forward to, to start the project. The e-signature system includes a number of supporting elements such as the establishment of a data center according to international standards, equipment and technical infrastructure of the highest specifications.